Okay. So, right. are we recording? Yep. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the people of America, the people of Acadia, welcome to the Senate debate, Sanders v. LePage. I'm your co-moderator, Speaker James Reason, and my other moderator is uh, muted, Mr. Bryson Clark. Hello, how's everybody? Uh, great introduction. Uh, we will be using a standard debate format. Uh, each question, you will get 30 seconds. Uh, we would. We can now move to opening remarks. Uh, Robert Sanders, you can go first. Did you say Representative LePage? You go first, or, rep, or... no? I said I said Robert Sanders. Okay. You can go first. Well, you cut out a bit, but thank you very much. Uh, both of you for moderating this debate. Uh, thank you, Reverend Senator Terrell, for hopping in a little bit and moderating this debate as well. Uh, this is a very important race uh, in a critical time for this country. And when I thought about running for office, you know, it's it, it seemed a lot easier uh, than it ended up being. You know, I'm an admiral. I've served in the Navy. I'm not a politician. Um, I'm someone who wants to get stuff done for this country. Uh, I've seen young men and women join the military and have their love militarized by people and politicians who care not about them, not about their nation, only about the profits and power of multinational corporations throughout the world, leading to useless wars that cause them those brave men and women to die in vain for no reason other than again the power of those multinational corporations i've seen factories here at home ravaged by trade deals instilled by those corporations taking out those jobs giving them to low-wage workers in Mexico and Southeast Asia, increasing the power of nations like China while diminishing the power of the working class here at home. I join a movement of people from the left, the right, the middle, who are tired of politics as usual. And I am here today not to criticize Mr. LePage personally, who is a good friend of mine, uh, and I'm sure he'll say the same. Uh, if he doesn't, we'll have some serious problems later. But instead, to help that movement, to bring to the Senate leadership which can join people like the Reverend Senator Terrell and whip that body into being, once again, the most prestigious legislative branch in the history of the world bringing back legislative sessions and calls just like these where we can debate and have full-throated discussions on the most important policies of our time this will increase engagement your time oh, is up just let me finish the point here this will increase engagement and in the country and the community at large bringing back that soul and that fire which sparks on all, in all of us, uh, this love for politics, this love for such a great country. Uh, again, I'm very happy to be here. I'm looking forward to this debate. Uh, thank you, Mr. James Reason, for letting me to extend my point a little bit here. Uh, and I very much forward to uh, debating the issues with you, Mr. LePage. Thank you. Uh, former Speaker Page, the uh, opening statement for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Reason. Uh, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for sponsoring today's debate. Uh, and I would like to thank the American people and the people of Acadia for tuning in. I'd also like to thank uh, the Admiral for showing up today. Uh, like he mentioned, uh, we are close personal friends uh, and we both have similar uh, aspirations in mind. Uh, and tonight's discussion, I hope, will just be a simple deliberation on what the best strategy for the country is to be able to achieve those amazing goals. So I thank him again for being here tonight. The backbone of any nation are formed by two different parts, family and faith. 
And the fact of the matter is, is that it is becoming more expensive, more costly, and harder for Americans to have a family, to own property, to have a home, and have a good life. That religion uh, and our faith, our personal faith in God or your chosen religion, uh, is, being is being stripped away uh, and are being condemned by popular media. We live in a nation that hates its own tradition, uh, where people despise their, the, 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 own, the, the great country, the great nation uh, that they've inherited. My campaign and my presence in American politics has always been about one thing, restoring faith in not only our institutions, but in our government, um, in the family structures that I know can work for this nation. Um, now, another big issue that uh, the United States Senate has faced recently are the politicians who talk the game, who promise the things that I know the voters care about, um, have, and, and instead have just been inactive, have been ignoring their duties. Uh, but we want a senator who will be energetic, who will be ready to tackle the issues at hand. And that is me. And that is why I'm running for Acadia Senate. Uh, thank you, both of you. Um... And I click the wrong thing. Uh, let's move on to my first question for you both. If elected to the United States Senate, what will be your first priority when in office? Uh, this question goes to Speaker LePage. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, now, as I just previously stated, senators have not been active and have not been excited to get things done. Uh, for their constituents. So I've been clear throughout my entire time here that I have three primary critical policy goals that I want to achieve uh, and aim for while I'm in office. Uh, and hopefully with uh, a new president as well, uh, as I'm sure you'll note, Mr. Reason. Um, first, I want to bring antitrust legislation against the big tech monopolies we have right now controlling um, our information uh, in the United States currently. They're the biggest platforms and they'll censor people who disagree with them. Um, perpetrate fake news and really foster hate uh, and monopolize the entire industry. Uh, the second one will be comprehensive immigration reform. We have too many people coming into the United States killing labor values for our lower income earners, the people at the bottom, giving the, the people who already have very low economic, uh, economic power even lower. And the third and final is to require that our federal government follow the first most basic rule of finance which is don't spend more money than you have. If I am elected senator, I will propose to the Senate floor a balanced budget amendment to make sure that our government doesn't overspend uh, and doesn't improperly spend your hard-earned American dollars. So those will be my priorities. All right, the question now goes to the Admiral Robert Sanders. Thank you very much, Mr. Reason. It's an extremely important question. My three priorities as Senator although I don't necessarily like the priorities list thing. I mean, as Senator, you never know uh, what's going to pop up. You never know what crisis is going to happen. So I, I do have to add that caveat. Although, my priorities as Acadia's United States Senator will be to revitalize our infrastructure, passing an infrastructure omnibus, which opens up a grant program allowing uh, municipalities, counties, and states in Acadia to achieve to, to reach federal dollars, uh, building up roads, bridges, waterway systems, pipe systems, uh, any infrastructure project that you can think your mind to. Uh, you mean you drive the New Hampshire roads, you drive the Massachusetts roads, and you feel it. You feel the lack of funds in the system. Uh, these are small states um, with no real uh, industry that can spur so much revenue to where they can keep up to date uh, with the weathering that happens in that state. That's where the federal government needs to step in. That's why we need these grant programs. That's priority one. Priority two, dealing with one of the biggest crises of our time, housing, making sure that we pass legislation which incentivizes municipalities and towns and villages to decrease uh, single-family zoning and increase high-density downtown zoning in their downtown commercial areas. 
allowing for uh, families to have a place downtown where they can access parks, businesses, and schools much simpler and much easier uh, than driving a mile and a half to get to the school through rural roads. Priority two. And that can be done in one infrastructure omnibus, and that will be the first piece of legislation that I introduce in the first two days of having been inaugurated as senator. The third priority is dealing with the supply chain crisis that we face. And, you know, subsequently, the working class, the fundamental issue with the working class in this country. Our supply chain is broken due to de uh, problems with China, yes, but it's also due to price gouging from pharmaceutical, from the pharmaceutical industry, from the oil industry, You're out of time. and from ah. other uh, large industries in this country. Dealing with that supply chain crisis through tackling those industries, not just big tech, but all of those industries breaking up their power, breaking up their control uh, by using Admiral the Sanders spirit here. of Teddy Roosevelt and dealing with them through antitrust legislation. Those three priorities will put us on a track to restore the soul of this country. All right. So Can I respond my... to a part of that? Yeah, you have one minute. Okay. So, so I think a lot of those goals are really good. Um, a few notes, though. The first, I noticed that that would require a lot of spending. Uh, the Admiral just spoke that he would want several omnibus spending packages. And while I acknowledge that infrastructure is very important, I think we need to address the problems at the root, which are that Americans just aren't making enough money uh, to be able to support themselves, uh, to be able to purchase a home, to be able to create the family environment that they want. Now, as I said in my opening statement, family is what I care about. Now, one of the biggest policies and the biggest issues uh, that I'd have to say that, that I have uh, with uh, what the Admiral just said is getting rid of single-family housing zones. Whoa, whoa, you see, whoa. The, ability, the ability to own property, the ability to have a single-family housing unit is part of the American dream that our children are entitled to, that the people uh, living today uh, in this great nation are entitled to. And removing the ability for them to be able to achieve that, and instead they're forced to live in multiple family, lower quality units, almost like pods, uh, I don't think that's, that's something that we as Americans should strive for. I believe that the ability to own a home, uh, and I agree, cheap ho housing is an issue, and we need to focus on cheap housing. Uh, but, but of course I'd say a lot of the people that, that don't have homes right now um, are, are the homeless people in the metropolitan area. And the way you deal with that isn't by giving them... Uh, multi hundred thousand uh, dollar apartments, which is the current strategy being taken upon um, by uh, by the California government, especially in Los Angeles, rather to criminalize homelessness. We live in America. We have higher standards to where we just don't let homeless people camp on the side of the street. We deal with them. So what we want is we want a strong family unit. We want single family housings. And the way that we deal with homelessness is that we get them off the streets. They are drug addicts. I would love to oh. respond to multiple things that Mr. LePage said, and I'm just going to. You can paint me any way yeah, you want minute. to. You can this paint me as some big spending liberal all you want, but my record speaks for itself. The policy speaks for itself. I oppose the infrastructure legislation that's currently in the Congress right now because it spends, in the legislation, hundreds of billions of dollars with no oversight, and with no specific specification of which municipalities it's going to, which projects it's going to, etc., etc., I trust the American people. I trust the towns, uh, the states, and the counties with these funds, and I will not vote for any legislation which authorizes funds uh, in a blanket way. What I'm talking about is using the power of the federal government, power which it is granted through processes like this debating and electing politicians and leaders who will then do those things to open a grant program where we're not authorizing funding without oversight and unwarranted but where the co the county the state and the town comes to us and then the process happens and we see which project they're trying uh to implement 
and then we give them funds accordingly. That is a fiscally responsible program, which will spend far less dollars than any Green New Deal, Ocasio-Cortez program, or even the moderate conservative right, program in uh, the House right, right now. Right. And I also have to say that s single family housing is vital to this country. I live in single family housing. Mischaracterization completely to say that I don't support single family housing. What I'm talking about is the downtown places in this country, in this state specifically, specifically in the 13 colonies, Acadia, New England, where you have downtown communities, rural communities with two story buildings. The first story is a commercial zoned building. The second story is empty space, unable to be zoned as high re uh, 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 residential zoning because of federal laws which restrict that ability. What I'm talking about is through an infrastructure omnibus, a fiscally responsible infrastructure omnibus, which in the legislation itself authorizes no funds, but gives power to departments to then, again, have the municipalities ask them through fun for funds through a process. Right, thank sure you, Robert. That that's, that's enough spent. of that question. Hold on. Making uh, my... funds... Oh, he said a lot. Making <laughs> make, he said much. So making sure those funds are being spent in an appropriate manner. And then on top of that, dealing with the housing crisis by not artificially inseminating the market, not by building public housing, which looks gross and is hated by every single community in this country, but instead using what's there thank you admiral your time has concluded hold on your time especially is in places your like your time has concluded i will admiral. finish up senator uh especially in places like new well, england we've let you go on for plenty of time those places in downtown communities dealing with this in a fiscally responsible way he said a lot i had to respond to it all you know this is, you know out of thank my hands you. thank you mr thank you mr sanders you, you've had your time thank you Okay, so my next question uh, is to Mr. LePage. You, you talk a lot about reinstilling these family values. Uh, how will you as a senator authorize the federal government to do such a thing and reinvigorate these family values that you speak of? Absolutely. So I think the first big thing uh, is tackling the issues that are dragging down the expansion of the middle class and our working classes. And I've, I've discussed immigration too. A very great length, but I think another part of it is addressing uh, the deficit we have with China, which currently costs our manufacturing sector millions of millions of jobs, uh, and, and also in, in employment opportunities with research and development. Um, not only would I address those uh, economic issues, um, but I also uh, would, would, would tackle uh, and implement child tax credits. Uh, I believe that making it more affordable to have a family and to have a home in America is one of the biggest responsibilities of the federal government. Um, we're here to represent the people. We're here to represent the hard workers um, who every single day uh, go to their job, they wake up and put food on the table for their families, they keep the lights on. Those are the people that I'm running to represent because they've been forgotten for far too long. Uh, young people are having to having are deciding to have families later and later and less and less, um, and our culture just can't survive like this. For the past hundreds of years that the United States has existed, uh, we've relied on those exact family values to function. So, child tax credit, uh, helping economic opportunities for our middle and working classes to reinvigorate the American family and the American dream. Um, is how we really help uh, save the culture and customs of this great nation. Thank you, uh, uh, any re Any rebuttal, uh, Admiral? I, I do have a rebuttal. I mean, I think Mr. LePage and I agree. I mean, we, you've heard it from both of us in, in, in similar senses. We've lost a sense of culture and a sense of soul here in this country. No disagreement here on that. However, I think... For someone who just criticized me for, oh, handing out money to the for infrastructure and all this, that's what a child tax credit is. Let's us, let us be clear. Uh, instead of dealing with those taxes and making sure that they simply don't exist for working class people uh, in many ways because the federal government doesn't need that much revenue when we deal with gutting uh, unnecessary administrative cost, unnecessary bureaucracy, that's 
when we can reduce taxes on working class people. Uh, that's when we can have a system where, uh, like the socialists say, like our good friend Bernie Sanders says, people can pay their fair share without raising taxes, unlike their socialist proposals. What we can do in this country to deal with the soul of our nation, the soul of our people, is to quite simply deal with how they're educated. We have to look at our school systems, and I know a lot has been done uh, to de-standardize schools, but we have to pass, and I, I, I hope to work uh, with Senator Terrell Portman and others who I know are passionate about this issue, to de-standardize our schools. We've all went through and we all uh, jokingly said to our friends, oh, school's a prison, school's a prison. You know, it's, it's a joke, but it has some truth to it. It has some serious truth to it. This is because of years and years of neoliberal control of our oh. education system. And okay. as, All right, as a senator, I would that's agree. Admiral, you're out of touch. Tom, um, I have a question. Can I, can I, can I um, make a quick comment on, uh, on education? You Just have 30, you, well, you have 30, you have 30 seconds. seconds for right. so I, think, I think those are some good standards. Um, but as senator, I would actually work across the aisle with Democrats uh, to institute um, a, a, another alternative to high school being trade school because we'll be offering a lot of real job opportunities uh, for a lot of our new high school graduates uh, to earn themselves some money. And I would also uh, introduce uh, school choice legislation to federalize school choice uh, and to oh. allow students uh, oh. to pick the best place for their education and have parents help them. Okay, give me okay. Ten moving on, on. Give me 10 seconds on that, Bryson. This is an important We, 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 we got to move, move on. We got to move on. We got to move on. Give me 10 seconds on we that, Bryson. Got to move I'm asking on. for 10 seconds. Mr. So, Sanders, please. We got to move on. We got to move on. Very, we got quick, more very quickly, all I, all I have to say is, you know, we can proclaim school choice all we want, or we can give education back to the state legislatures as it has to be and then urge those state legislatures to give it back to the counties and then eventually have a system where schools and school boards make the decision putting the power back in the hands of the parents oh, that goes beyond okay. school okay. choice well, wait a minute wait, 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 wait that see i knew that was gonna happen i wanted to move on we will get back to education later we will have plenty of time to engage on this i have a question about uh the u.s china relationship policy uh, as you both know u.s and china relations that are at an all-time low uh according to the associated press the u.s economic free fall halts following the report the repeal of the china embargo and I'll read a little bit of this. It appears some of the U of the most crucial U.S. suppliers just barely prevented some major shortages in domestic changes following the repeal of the U.S.'s embargo on the PRC and influx of exports coming into all parts of American commerce from China. But it has not been brought an end to the crisis entirely. Though China's place in the marketplace has been restored, it is still a shell of its former self as an international manufacturer. And it will take years or decades for certain issues, industries, <coughs> excuse me, that rely on them, like in electronics and machinery. For the wounds of this recession to heal, major innovators in those businesses have been forced to forego upgrades to the products that the suppliers will not be able to produce them at a sufficient rate. So, candidates, what is your stance on uh, U.S. China relations? Is it time to get tougher, or do we need to turn down the heat? This, since uh, the first question in this debate, went towards Mr. LePage, we will go to Mr. Admiral Sanders first, and we will hear what he has to say. Then, Mr. LePage, you will have your chance to rebut and state your position. Mr. Sanders, take it away. Can you tell us how much time we have in the beginning of the question? You you have two minutes. Okay, that gives, for that, your, you have makes, two minutes. that gives me a little bit more, you know, I'll, I'll, I might stop going over. No promises, and though. You know, I, you know I'm a long-winded, I have a long-winded voice. But I know here's what we do. You are. <laughs> So here's what we do about China. One of the most important issues, and as I said before, the supply chain is one of my top priorities. And it will be one of the top priorities of this next Congress, despite whoever wins this election. Because the American people are feeling it at the pocketbook, they're feeling it at the gas station, they're feeling it when buying gifts for their family. And we need to deal with this issue now. How we get this done is almost, we, we, we have to sort of step back and take a win. We have gotten what so many have proclaimed we want for so long. 
we have an opportunity to end our reliance on China as a manufacturing base. This is the opportunity to change our trade deals, to change our banking system, to change our workforce, and to once and for all restore a manufacturing base here in the States. I want to pursue legislation which does that, trade deals which do that, working with uh, whatever incoming administration, whatever, uh, whether it be the Daves or the Reason One, to get this done uh, on a bipartisan basis with working class people, uh, with the, uh, working th through the lens of working class people and ensuring uh, that they are no longer sold out. That, okay, will, move that will address the supply chain crisis at its core, and that's how we can bring down prices, restore the manufacturing base here at this, in this country, and once again have a rust belt oh. that works for us. All right. All now right. to uh, now to former Speaker LePage, your rebuttal and stance, sir. Go ahead. Two so, minutes. I would say I agree with a lot of the prospects that the Admiral just pointed out. Uh, we are given this unique opportunity to be able to reform our systems uh, and ensure that we don't allow another country to be able to have so much manipulation and determination over what we as a sovereign nation look like with uh, our economy. Uh, now, as a leader of the state of Acadia, uh, I will ensure and I will fight to ensure that manufacturing bases are brought back uh, to Acadia. Um, we've seen uh, Connecticut, actually, my home state, uh, is known for having many orchards. Uh, and a lot of those orchards have actually switched their production over to China. Uh, and with this recent shutdown, I believe we can encourage them uh, to come back to make in the United States through the proper economic incentives. Uh, and that's what's really important. Uh, important, And a lot of these will revolve around reducing the uh, the small business tax and the corporate tax. Now, that's solely for the position. Uh, I believe that corporations need to pay their fair share. Uh, but I will say that we, you know, what, what's more important to the people of this country is jobs and having secure jobs. Uh, and if we have to have a lower corporate tax rate to, to incentivize them to build here um, and to bring jobs, uh, for our hardworking people, good paying jobs with good benefits, uh, then that's an unfortunate side we might have to, I believe, ways to rectify that. Uh, but I believe that's a very good policy. Okay. Um, okay. But, All right, that's enough. To, to continue this talk on embargoes and okay, China. Uh, and we'll, 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 oh, well, I was going to say, uh, Mr. Sanders, do you have a rebuttal? Well, I do. I mean, I, I'm glad that he agrees with the premise of what I said, but uh, focusing on the corporate tax credit as if that will deal with the issue of building uh, manufacturing base here in this country is just wrong. I mean, we've seen a decrease in the corporate tax. I mean, I support decreasing the corporate tax credit, let me just be clear. Uh, but we've seen a decrease in the corporate tax credit over the last 40 years. It has done nothing to rebuild the manufacturing base. There is only one candidate who, when asked this question, gave a passionate response about reforming our trade deals and protecting our working class, which is largely the white working class, which has... I'll be back in a second. Okay. Which has been uh, stripped of its meaning, stripped of its purpose, leading to a lot of the cultural aspects we see today. So, when, you know, this is the most important yeah. question, as I said in the beginning, and I'll end right here, because... This affects every issue. This is the reason our culture is shallow. This is the reason the working class feels oh, angry. Right. This is the reason that we need to deal with it. All right. And there's one All right. who was most passionate. And, and we'll have one more uh, rebuttal, a little bit of rebuttal to what he just said. Mr. LePage, go ahead, Mr. LePage. We do have 30 seconds, and after that, we're moving on. We're not doing any more of this crosstalk. So let's go ahead and wrap it on up. Mr. LePage, go ahead. Um, well, I'll say I think he only focused on that I said. I believe there are other uh, advancements that we could go to, or other economic incentives that we could go towards, such as other tax credits, uh, subsidies. Um, this is what you have to do to be able to uh, bring companies aboard. Uh, China uh, actually has a program where um, if, if you become a state run program or if any of your assets become state run, you pay 0% corporate tax. And that's been a big draw. Uh, of what uh, of what's really attracting companies to China? So you want state-run uh, companies? Whoa, 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 whoa! Let's not come on, come on. Let's not do that. Let's not let's not interrupt. Let him finish. 
Yes, if I, if I could finish, uh, I, 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 just you know, I'm I'm here for a respectful debate uh, and a civil debate, um, and it, so so I want us to focus uh, on all aspects of uh, invi uh, of give, giving similar incentives uh, to make sure that companies can bring their labor uh, here to America, so their their product can proudly wear a made in America. All right. All right, well, we're going to move on uh, to the next topic. Um, let's talk about the passage of the Protect Our Children Act that passed in the Senate. Uh, as you both know, there's a growing fear and debate in the U.S. over this piece of legislation that deals with trans transgender rights. And um, it deals with the theory of seeing transgenderism as child abuse and gender surgeries as a... Um, problem and big big thing that we need to deal with this uh legislation is a big hot topic in congress uh the representative representative clark uh motion to table this in the judiciary committee um uh, he stated his uh overwhelmingly opposition to it for a uh, federal overreach uh what is this is for both candidates by the way what are your stances on this legislation and um will you try to see fit that it does pass or is revised in the Senate. Uh, what, what are your stances on this legislation? We'll start with Mr. LePage. Gladly. So uh, Senator Cuomo is an actually a close personal friend of mine, uh, and I helped him uh, with some of the ideas for this piece of legislation. Uh, I am a full supporter of the Protect Our Children Act. I believe allowing uh, youth at the age of five, six, seven, whose brains haven't fully uh, uh, formed enough to where we as society let them smoke cigarettes, let alone drive, uh, make life-altering decisions about their own uh, chemical and biological makeup, um, allowing them to, to go through life-changing surgeries that, that change uh, the body parts that they have. And, and these, these uh, there's a reason that we don't allow people of this age to make these decisions. Um, now, unfortunately, not all states in America agree uh, and can see this clearly because of the cultural stupidity. Uh, and degeneracy that we've been allowing to ourselves, uh, are allowing ourselves. Um, so I believe it's important for the federal government to ensure the posterity of these people, as referenced in the preamble, uh, to ensure that our family values uh, are secure uh, and that we don't allow uh, parents to foolishly allow their children uh, to change their complete biological and chemical uh, with very little information. And, all, and often uh, and a decision that they'd regret. Uh, if you look at the suicide rates for, for young people uh, who are transgender and older people of trans, uh, the most common uh, associate, uh, the most common psychological disorder associated with people uh, who are transgender, at 66% of them, is depression. Uh, so why should we be encouraging these people who have these okay. serious mental uh, illnesses? Okay. As a okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Admiral Sanders, your rebuttal on your stance, sir. Go ahead. Well, there's not much disagreement on this uh, issue, I think. Uh, you know, when it comes to protecting our children, which, again, is the, not just the title, but the premise of the act, we have to make sure that uh, we understand that children are not adults. Uh, they don't have the ability to make decisions as adults. There's a reason... Uh, Similar to what Mr. LePage said, we don't prosecute children uh, as adults um, when sometimes they make a mistake. Uh, we can't allow children to make this mistake. Uh, and, and regardless of what the Supreme Court says, uh, you can be rest assured that Senator Sanders will be a strong advocate for protecting our children uh, in many ways at, uh, in the United States Senate. Okay. Um, I think there's no disagreement on this topic. Uh, Mr. LePage, do you have anything else you might add before we move on? No, I would not. And I believe this is a, this is important uh, for viewers to notice, is that I think this is a very good throughout uh, the United States, that there are certain limits that we need to have, uh, legal federal limits, on what uh, children can and can't do to their bodies at the very basic minimum. And I'm very happy to hear that the Admiral agrees. And I'm sure most decent Americans. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to Mr. Reza. 
this question, we'll go to Mr. Sanders, since we went to Mr. LePage uh, last. What will you do? We, you both have talked a lot about increasing jobs in your state. What will you do to um, do such a thing when you're a senator? Well, I think I think we've both answered that like three times. Well, thank you honestly. for, I mean, yeah, as I, I was mean, going to say, in, thank in you. specific detail, like what kind of well, legislation? as I said multiple times, and as uh, Mr. LePage has said just now, uh, in specific legislation, we'll be dealing with uh, the the infrastructure omnibus, the zoning changes, uh, trade law, uh, dealing with China uh, in a serious way, addressing the core of the working class issue. Uh, and as I'll, and I'll say this again, um, there is only one candidate who has been truly clear and articulate on that issue. Um, Okay. Rather, well, I mean, I understand, and just because I'll I know this question. is just because I know um, this is coming, and uh, I won't have the final word on it. Let me just say this: tax credits, uh, all this, ta you know, changing the tax law, as Mr. LePage said, that's important. But advocating for that, as if that's the solution to working class people who are going through the struggle right now. Uh, you know, I, I I think of my mom when we were when we were younger. Uh, working 17 hour days in her small business unable to get ahead despite everything uh, doing everything right uh, I think of those people who have made no mistake whatsoever and need a passionate leader in the United States Senate uh, to get done the print uh, to recognize the principle for them the principles of life liberty and the pursuit of happiness right. which they've been guaranteed so since we since we've covered this I'm going to move we, on yeah, to yeah we've covered it I have a, yeah I have a I, I, all right I have, I, a, have I have a better. Question. Okay, well, no, no, well, you, you ask yours and then I'll ask mine because yeah, mine are a little a bit more interesting ago, than yours. A few weeks ago, the Supreme Court shot down the federal heartbeat bill. If you're a senator, what will you do to um, tackle the issue or of abortion, or will you not tackle the issue at all? This uh, question will go to the former speaker. All right. Well. First off, I'd like to say that I'm pro-life, and I've always been pro-life throughout my entire political career, uh, for the sole reason that I recognize uh, the obvious fact that a life is a life. Um, the idea that someone can completely end someone's, someone else's future and their livelihood based on a whim of convenience, because that's what it is, is abhorrent. Uh, I believe the Supreme Court made, uh, Supreme made the wrong call here, as many Supreme Courts uh, have. Uh, however, I'll work with my fellow senators, of whom uh, I've already worked with previously when I was Speaker of the House, uh, to make sure that we get more pro-life legislation. As Speaker of the House, uh, I oversaw the passage of the heartbeat bill, uh, and I, I fought for it to, to happen. And I would continue to do that as a senator uh, for that simple reason, uh, that I am pro-life, and that, that I will fight for pro-life, family, Christian values in any area of government. Uh, whether that be social issues, uh, economic issues, uh, anything that can help the, the family core um, prosper uh, and, and that, that, that we can fulfill um, our, our ultimate faith as Americans. Mr. Sanders, your rebuttal and stance. Well, there's not much for rebuttal. I am also pro-life, and I, but I have to say uh, I'm an institutionalist as well, and I respect the decision of this Supreme Court, uh, if given the opportunity to vote on a Supreme Court justice, uh, and this is something I guess would be a rebuttal, this is something we can actually do. Uh, if there's an opportunity uh, to put a justice on the court in one way or the other, then the pro-life members of the, of the Senate irregardless of party, because I know that there are some of my Democrat friends who are uh, pro-life as well. We have to urge the executive branch to pass, uh, to nominate the most pro-life candidate that we can to ensure that when this issue gets back to the Supreme Court in its next term, which it surely will, that this decision does not happen again. As I said in the answer before, we have to protect our children in more ways than one. We have to do this. We have to do uh, 
the Protect Our Children Act. We have to restore our waterways and pipes. We have to change our education system and make sure that the future leaders of our country have a world which is built to foster their reality. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Uh, and then I think that since there's not much disagreement on that, we'll move on. I noticed earlier that we had a big little blow up and a big, 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 big debate on education. I know that there is some difference of opinion on that topic, so we'll just go to that. First of all, how do you both view uh, the education system in the U.S.? And uh, if you are elected to the Senate, respectively, how will you legislate on that topic? Um, advocates of school choice call for more expansion of uh, opportunities for kids to be able to go to charter schools and gifted education. Public school advocates argue that there's not enough public school funding to make public schools successful. How do you both feel about this topic and how would you handle it and legislate on it if you're elected? We'll start off with Mr. Admiral Sanders. We'll give it to you first. Thank you very much. As I said before, school choice, while important, is not the only solution. Uh, the federal government needs to address fundamental issues in the public schools and you know if we're not going to do that if mr lepage doesn't want to do that then he should just come out and say he doesn't want public schools because we have an issue with our public schools it's creating kids in the inner city which would rather join a gang than uh go to school it's creating kids in rural areas which are so disconnected from reality that they start taking opioids. Uh, this is a crisis and critical moment in this country. And my plan for an education overhaul, yes, includes school choice. And I support PPT Donnie Drake's legislation and I urge President Wilde to sign that bill getting school choice done once and for all but also on top of that what i will do as a senator is support an education overhaul with people like uh speaker james reason reverend senator terrell portman representative bryson clark and people from the other side who will actually get done what has to get done changing the way school works i don't want to hear Oh, school is a prison anymore in our classrooms. I don't want to hear that our teachers have to work two or three jobs to get ahead. I want a system where those people can achieve life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness individually okay. and move forward and achieve the American All right. dream. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. LePage, go ahead. All right. Um, well, on the issue of education, a few different areas that you want to hit. Uh, first, to answer your question, no, I, I don't think we should abolish public schools. Uh, but I do think a lot of parents are removing their children. Well, I mean, parents are removing their children from public school at a surprising rate, opting for uh, homeschooling. And the sole reason is because they don't feel like uh, the education being taught at the schools is indicative of their own values. Uh, many parents are watching their children do homework, embracing critical race theory uh, and Black Lives Matter, uh, which aren't groups that they agree with. Um, so I would strongly, uh, state that first, we need to change up the rhetoric. Uh, second is that, you know, and I, I think, uh, Mr. Sanders talks a lot of big game here, uh, and that, that I tend to agree with, uh, that we should change up the way that school is done. But I'm going to tell him this right now, and I want to make sure that I'm abundantly clear for everyone listening, uh, that you can't do that at the federal scale. A change in an institution of schools happens at the state, local, uh, or the state and municipal level. Uh, and for that to happen, I, I will follow through. I will help in the abolition of the Department of Education and core curriculum standards. And instead, I will replace it with a federal grant commission, uh, which is responsible for allocating money toward uh, public schools in need. Um, but alongside this, I want to invest in universal trade schools as an alternative to high school uh, in our inner cities, uh, providing young people, um, and especially young men, for an opportunity for an option outside of joining uh, criminal game, criminal games outside of working a mindless job uh, over at Dunkin' Donuts or McDonald's and instead working with our hands, building things, fixing things, 
realizing their actual potential. I believe these are ways that we greatly curb uh, crime and uh, crime um, and lawlessness in our inner cities, and also uh, help fight against the opioid epidemic. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. M- Mr. Sanders, yes, you well, have first a of all, 30 Mr. seconds. Page, I think Make you should quick. clean your ears because oh. way before in the beginning <clears throat> of this, uh, when I was the first candidate to bring up education as a part of restoring the culture of our country, way before the, con- uh, the question was asked, I said that the only way we're going to get this done is by giving it back to the state legislatures and urging them. Who are you them, talking about? Whoa! Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, you didn't want to be interrupted. Now, the you're not going to be interrupted. The first thing I said was urging, was uh, getting the education system back to the state legislatures and then urging them through uh, recommendation, legislation, etc., etc., et uh, advocacy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to push it back to the counties and then get us back to a situation where the school boards and the parents control the education system. It's on the tape, so you can see it. Why didn't I talk about it? I talked about it. So se- that's first of all. And secondly, really quick, I hear you, Bryson. Really quickly, I have to say, uh, complete mischaracterization. This is not just a big game. We can get this done. We've achieved, I mean, the system I'm talking about is the system which has existed before in history. A system where school boards control which curriculum is taught at their schools. Simply put, end of story. Streamlining the process, gutting uh, wasteful federal government bureaucracy, and ensuring that parents, their teachers, have a conversation with the school board and decide which curriculum they want to teach in which area to decide what is best for their students in this oh-so-large country. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, We're going to move on from that. Um, I I, I got a question. Thank you. go, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Colonel Sanders, for that response. Uh, Okie doke. Uh, here's a question for you people. Um, so let me ask y'all this 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 here question I got for you. Now we talk a lot about budgets, uh, and that is going to be one thing that I hope uh, this new president, whoever he up. might be, uh, I hope that that they put together a a good budget. Uh, the budget that we recently passed was. A complete nightmare. Uh, we shouldn't have passed mm-hmm. it, but it is what it is. Um, so let me ask both of you this: um, What is your stance on a balanced budget amendment? Do you support it? Or do you oppose it? Um, we and already talked you about this. It? Well, oh, I, it wasn't in the question oh. though, and I I, I wasn't yeah. asked it. Yeah. Well. Okay. Reason. C. Yeah. There, I could have swore. I could have swore we didn't talk about that. Yeah. We did. I brought it up. I brought it up as one of my three agenda items yeah th- uh, this okay, wasn't well, a broad yeah. question though so we yeah, well, we yeah well, we're gonna we gonna talk about it then so, okay thank you reza thank you uh so we, well, let's go more in depth uh your view on a balanced budget amendment what would that look like uh, and what would that uh long term do uh to for our country uh so uh colonel sanders uh, did you go first on the last one he did. He did. So I'm gonna go okay, to page. So, so, so right. good old LePage. Go on right ahead. So in the beginning of this debate, I outlined that one of my top three priorities are passing a balanced budget. Uh, like I said, this is one of the simple. Don't spend more uh, than you make. Uh, we instead keep assigning a lot of our debt to the reserve. Keep printing money, uh, trillions of dollars that actually shouldn't exist in the United. States. Uh, and I'd say the longer-term ramifications and the real damage uh, that could be caused by a balanced budget is way off uh, by multiples of what damage is done to the economy by inflation. And that is mostly caused uh, by deficit spending from our federal government. So I'd say that that, that, that would for any of the knockbacks toward our economy. Um, however, I would say in certain scenarios, such as a war, um, or a, an actual pandemic out. Um, I would put a provision within this constitutional um, that three fourths of both bodies, uh, that three fourths of both bodies, uh, may vote to break the uh, to break the standard. Wait, wait, um, wait, 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 Admiral. Let's 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 keep our comments to a a, a minimum, please. Uh, and oh, was that a hot mic moment? I'm, I I apologize. 
Put stuff on mute, make sure you put stuff on mute, but, but okay. Uh, uh, Paul, Shit, I think I think I have to call you up, Paul. I think I have to call you up, just like Ducey. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, Paul, finish your, finish your remarks so that way we can let the Admiral respond, because he's eager to respond. Yeah, I, I understand that. I understand that. He's very eager to, to tell the American how wrong he is. Um, but as I said, pounds, pa uh, passing the balance budget will be one of my highest priorities. It'll prevent inflation, uh, and it'll make sure that we don't get indulge in frivolous spending as a federal, uh, to ensure that we tighten up our budget and we, and we have some provisions uh, incentive we spend as a federal is to the maximum benefit of the American people that we can make. So that's it. Well, th I mean, Colonel, thank you. Just to correct the record, I mean, uh, the reason I uh, that hot, hot mic moment happened is because I, I'm glad. Uh, it, it, it's a you you fucker of admiration. I I I'm very pleased to see that the speaker has. Signed on to the policy that I talked about in last in last night's town hall debate, where we can't, uh, and and I talked about the fact that I, I I don't support a constitutional amendment for a balanced budget, but I in fact support uh, the legislative pathway um, where we pass um, as is the premise of the question a, a, an amendment to uh, the legislative rule where we have to as a uh, part of the budgetary process come up with a balanced budget giving us that leeway without having to go through the arduous process of a constitutional amendment getting all the governors to sign on two-thirds of the congress to sign on and getting done getting it done in a more streamlined way where we can have uh both chambers pass it in a simple majority and then have the president sign it where i mean we have a situation where we have a president incoming uh, almost assuredly who will sign this legislation so i support getting this done in the fastest way possible and again i'm glad speaker lepage has joined on to the the uh provisions i talked about yesterday where the balance well, I have. hold on i haven't you, you actually did with the provisions I talked about. Well, if you want to let me finish. Uh-uh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Can I, can I just have 30 seconds? No, no, hold on. No, you, you oh, no, cut no, into no, his time. No, wait a minute. You cut into his time. We're not going to have you. Now, we both want you to be respectful. Okay, finish. Colonel, finish your time, and then we're going to let we're gonna let. I'm happy that you joined on to the amendments that I said yesterday, which were... and. He did join on to them. We have records of this conversation last night and of this conversation tonight, so we can check the facts on this. The provisions where, I, you know, I support a balanced budget, but in the event of a war, in the event of uh, an unforeseen crisis, a hurricane or a disaster, like I talked about last night when Mr. LePage asked me the question, we have to be able to run deficits. That's why we have a government. Uh, you know, the government ain't a business. Uh, we have the ability to be able to run deficits. And that ability has been exploited by politicians bought and sold by those multinational corporations since the 1990s who wasted a surplus, that, the surplus enough. that we had, and we have to restore all right. that surplus. All right. All right. LePage, go you. ahead and get at it. You have 30 seconds, and I'm counting down. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Well, so I, I want to be clear. I did sign on to the Sanders bill here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'd maintain the constitutional process. Listen, Adam, we can do things the quick and easy way, uh, but that makes things less set in stone. Uh, I want to make sure that this is a balanced budget amendment that outlives myself and even my kids in the country to make sure that fiscal responsibility becomes part of the culture, the political culture uh, in the United States in providing a three-fourths vote threshold in both the Senate and the House uh, is plenty enough to ensure that only real emergencies, only real wars, uh, and real causes for concern allow us to deficits. Oh. Okay. Well, okay. Just give me 10 um, seconds here, because this is Okay. It's it's literally look, 10 it's, it, it, it literally depends. 10 seconds. Literally 10 seconds. Literally 10 literally 10 seconds. seconds. Go. Literally 10 seconds. All I have to say is, when it comes to Two, budgetary three, meetings, I'll actually... Sh well, I can't... He's, he, yeah, that's interrupting. That's interrupting. When it comes, when it comes right, to, thank you, Colonel when Sanders. It, when it comes to budgetary meetings, I'll actually show up 
and when it comes to a balanced budget amendment, I will actually get it done. But you just said oh, you won't. Thank you. All right, that's more than 10 okay. seconds. Uh, we're going to move on. I'm going to turn, turn it back over to the two people that think they run stuff, uh, but you don't run nothing but your mouths, Bryson and James, going back in. Okay, well, I'm going to have one because the reason you did go out there, I got to run on. So uh, this is a direct question for Admiral Sanders. Admiral Sanders, you're running as an independent, as you know. Um, when you get to the, If you were elected to the Senate, you will have the option to caucus with either party. Will you choose the caucus and make a decision, or will you stay as an independent and represent the people of Cambia as an independent in the Senate? Hey, you. That's what okay if you can hear me will be me. your choice? That's a question that uh, my office is mulling right now. I'm definitely leaning towards one party. Uh, that's a decision that I think needs to be made if the honor is given to me. Um, it will be a caucus. I mean, I'll still be an independent, but I will probably caucus uh, with the party that most aligns with my views. And I think, you know, throughout this debate, that's been made clear um, because I want to be able to get things done. Uh, I want to be able to support leadership. Um, so wh what I can say is it's almost 80% sure that I'll caucus uh, while remaining, not joining a party, but caucusing because I feel it's important, you know, given my uh, service in the military to remain a registered independent here at uh, voting. So that, that'd be my answer. Okay. Um, Mr. LaPage, do you have any rebuttal to what he said? Because if you don't, we can move on. Oh, why uh, should he? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, why should he? I can't just get rebuttal, so shut up. Anyway, yeah, but that ain't a rebuttal. Mr. I'll a rebuttal. turn it over. I'll turn it over to Mr. Reason. Uh, Reason, go ahead. Uh, I'd like to move to the audience for audience questions. Audience, well, you before can. we get to the audience questions, I do got one more. All right, I'll hand it to the Reverend Senator. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, this is a question I've gotten from a, a person. Uh, that, that came in and watched uh, some pre pre submitted questions. Um, so let me ask you about um, federal minimum wage. Um, as some of you know, in real life, uh, President Joseph Biden, the the actual uh, president of the United States, not you know, election wasn't stolen. The real president, um, president is former President Trump. Trump is the actual president. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the big lie is the big truth. The big lie is the big truth. As, as by executive order, if I'm not mistaken, the federal minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour, which he said he would do. Um, and so with that being the case, in this community, uh, would you support increasing or decreasing the federal minimum wage, or do you support abolishing the federal minimum wage altogether and allowing the uh, the minimum wage to just be simply hey. up to the state? Okay. Turn that shit off. Thank you, Donnie. Okay. apologize, everybody. Um, that question is going to go to, uh, I believe, Colonel Sanders. He just got a question. Okay. He well, did go. Yeah, okay. Did go. Oh, so Paul answered. Somebody That's answered the question. Y'all both going to answer the question. That's All right. Matter. So yeah, with the federal minimum wage, um, so I don't think that's a necessary thing that we should do. Uh, states right now are making their own decisions of how and whether to raise the uh, raise their own minimum wage because the cost of living, uh, depending which state you live in, uh, is different. Kentucky, for example, has the uh, has it at the federal minimum, twenty five, while Connecticut ha right now has it at twelve dollars because there's a very stark difference in cost uh, of living. Um, if we raise the federal minimum wage, not only a will that exacerbate the issue of inflation, uh, but number two is you're going to see a lot of layoff. Uh, and I know something. Uh, I know jobs is something that. The Admiral and I really, really are passionate about. Um, and we'd lose a lot of jobs if we had a federal minimum wage uh, hike, especially one that is almost double um, the current one. Um, there was a, a study conducted where there would be a loss of, uh, I, I want to I wanna say about 500,000. Um, that was the last time I remember reading some literature about it. Uh, just within the first five years of passing legislation like that. What it does is it makes it uh, it makes lower skill work positions more competitive uh, because the pay is forced to be higher. So you're not offering young Americans, people that want to be involved in the workforce, 
you know, that, that are actually trying to go out and get a job. You're preventing them from being able to do that in the first place uh, by raising the federal minimum wage. Rather, well, if you allow states to do it, um, it's done on a basis that adjusts for uh, for the standard of living. Or the cost of living. All right, Amos Sanders, rebuttal in stance, please. Well, I don't have necessarily too much of a rebuttal, but what I have to say as a, as uh, someone who proclaims to be a labor candidate is the federal minimum wage is a distraction, a neoliberal distraction from the core of the issue. Bill Clinton supports the federal minimum wage, but he implemented NAFTA and the deregulation of Wall Street, which led to multiple economic recessions uh, and, again, the stripping of our culture, uh, the burning of our factories, the exploitation of low-wage workers abroad. We have to be real about the history of these policies when Democrats or liberals or independents or Republicans talk about them because it gets lost. I don't support the federal minimum wage. I support labor policy which gives power to the individual, to the worker, which says that you can, are in control of your money and the federal government will make sure that roads are there that bridges are there, that you can drive and do commerce, but we're not interfering in your life. We're not letting your culture die out, and we will protect the principles that are enshrined in our Constitution. All right. Uh, anything else on this further topic of the page? Thank, God, like to, thank you, God. Oh, would we like God. to move on? Would we like to say anything else, or are we moving on? No, we're we're moving on. I'm good. All right, moving on up. Okay. Um, audience, audience, Donnie yeah. Drake, you got something? Bit Donnie, if you gonna oh Donnie left. Oh, okay, Donnie back. Donnie, you got any questions? The PPT. Okay, yeah, big Donnie, you got some questions? Sorry, I couldn't. My thing cut out a second there. It's all right. So, Y'all hear me? Yes, we hear you. And we hear you just fine. Okay. So, my question to both candidates is uh, more of a, I guess, emotional side. We've heard about policy. We've heard about the facts. Let's hear about the feelings. You know. Yeah. Um. What 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 is in? I mean, giving you the passion to even want to. Uh, hop over to the Senate when there's so much you could be doing, uh, you know, in your business, growing a business, all sorts of things, rather than coming into the political life. Well, I guess well, I guess I'll go ahead and go first. Do you? Do you want to go first? I think the admiral should go first. We'll have the we'll have the admiral go first. Yeah. Whichever works for me, but I really appreciate this question. It doesn't get asked often enough in these uh, sparring debates of um, very powerful speakers and politicians and ideas. Uh, you know, I'm an admiral in the United States Navy. I, I, I joined the service uh, in Vietnam. Uh, you know, I, it, politics was just. Uh, the leaders playing with our lives for me. Um, but we're at a critical moment in this country, as I've said multiple times in this debate. We need leadership which, when they say they are going to be active, will be active. We need leadership which is at the table. We need leadership which works with those senators who are begging the rest of the Senate to come together in a United States, in a session, in a live session, to do their job. We need senators who are willing to work for antitrust legislation that will burst this monopolized market that we have, restore the soul of our country and the culture. I, you know, I'm running because these issues are deeply personal to me. I, I can no longer serve 
uh, in these false economic wars, uh, watching my nation, my culture, and the world that is supposed to be left for my kids and grandchildren burn away. Uh, I have to do everything I can to help that fire stop, to pick up those ashes and rebuild this nation, to restore, as I've said many times in this debate, the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for every single person in this country. That's a bipartisan message on the ground. That's a message of hope, which is so right. sorely needed in this country. And I want to restore hope in this country. All right. Well, glory to the highest. Uh, former Speaker of the Page, you're next up. Come on with it. Uh, I'd say I have a passion for people. You know, during my time, so before I got involved in politics, I ran a show, Paula Page Tonight. Um, and it was, it was the, the biggest Fox News show, um, biggest host on cable news. Uh, and a lot of people tuned in to hear what I had to say. What's, what's, what's going on in the world? Uh, and what I had a tendency of doing was, was exposing the obvious truth uh, of how American people are getting screwed over, how much suffering. Uh, so I, I'd say my passion is driven by wanting to actually help the American people. You know, I, I have been raised... Uh, and always have, have, have had patriotism uh, coursing through my veins. Uh, I, I think it's one of the best, uh, you know, nationalism. I think it's one of the best attributes of a person to have is pride of their country, their land, their people. You know, I did a speech over one, uh, over once in the Ukraine, and uh, I took a visit to their border, their southern border. It's very strong. It's walls, uh, not surprisingly, and they have armed troops. Uh, and I saw a uh, I saw a member. Forces, uh, Border Patrol, uh, pick up this trash. Uh, and I told him, I asked him, I was like, why? He went out of your way. I mean, he, he, he walked quite a distance to pick it up. And I asked him, why? why? It was probably just going to blow away. Wouldn't have been a problem. And he said, because it looks bad, because it doesn't belong there. Um, and he said, because it made, uh, because he had respect uh, for, for where he was. Uh, and I think a lot of that passion and, and patriotism really lost uh, its touch in, um, in modern American culture. And so I'd say my passion is trying to rejuvenate, um, trying to bring a new appreciation for the amazing nation that we have been so lucky and fortunate to be able to inherit the opportunities that we can acquiesce to, uh, that we can that we can gain and we can uh, experience more uh, and challenge more in the modern world that we have, uh, all because of what we've been given and what we've inherited. So yes, I'd say my passion for this seat and the reason I want to go into the Senate preserve the American way and the American for the American people. Okay, right. well, thank All you. Right. And I got one one more, and then I think we can go close the table. Yes. Um, well, to end on a lighthearted moment, a lighthearted note, uh, this is not going to make uh, much of a difference. Uh, but uh, I want two things from both of you. Okay, one, I want your favorite color. Um, and two, I want you to uh, want you both to uh, say uh, something nice about each other. Uh, let's see if you all catch what I'm trying to do. Uh, so I don't care which one of you goes first. Tell me your favorite color, and tell me what you like about uh, the other person. Or, or say, well, and I want you to say um, something nice about the other person. Let's see if you can. Uh, <laughs> or if you both. And, 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 oh, and by the way, I don't want to overshadow this. But before the, your closing statements, I'm gonna pray over both of you. So um, just get ready for that. But you're gonna. Uh, but go ahead. Is that what you're I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to do a prayer. A right, quick okay. prayer. Just making sure you all. heard you. Right. Hallelujah! I'm ready for that. Well, all right. Tomorrow, yeah, you're gonna, re gonna receive it. Bo, 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 bo. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Answer, uh, answer the question. One Thank, of you. Thank you for the question. I, uh, my favorite color is, you know, I'm a I'm a hiker. You know, so I very I very like. Uh, I like to hike um, Mount Monadnock here in uh, the Monadnock region near uh, Keene, Keene, New Hampshire. Then ask you like hold to on, hike. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is, is going to be, this is, I'm leaning up to it. Um, well, I, I stayed, oh, I stayed, well, hold on, exactly. I stayed <laughs> at, uh, overnight at, um, on top of Mount Monadnock one time, which not necessarily technically supposed to do, but if you get the chance to do it, do it. Because when you sit on the top of that mountain, and watch the gradient of the sunrise, and you can see the whole horizon. There ain't nothing like it, and that's that, that, that's my favorite color: sunrise on Monadnock. So, 
And, I, and my, uh, I love I love Chase's passion. Uh, he's a he's a fiery person, and and I think one great thing I can say about him is he'll make a phenomenal politician in real life when he runs. He's got uh, the voice of a lawyer. So, <laughs> well, thank thank you very okay. much. Well, I'll, I'll start with my favorite color. Uh, I'd have to say it's it's very interesting. It's actually burgundy. Uh, I think it has the nice kind of touch between uh, between red, which is one of my other favorite colors, because I think it represents action, uh, doing things, and, and aggression, uh, and, and kind of like like that, that uh, acted spirit that I think everyone wants. Uh, and the other half, the Holy is Spirit, the darker too. tone of the professionalism, which I appreciate. Uh, now, in terms of what I appreciate about, you know, I mean, you called me Chase Oakley. What I appreciate about Jonah, genuinely. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll, no, seriously, I, not, 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 like, physical, but I mean, uh, I'll talk to him privately, uh, sometimes, uh, and he, he truly, he knows what he wants, a vision, uh, for, for, for making this country a better place, uh, and I think, I think all of his most purest you can get, you know, so, I mean, at the end of the day, even if I lose this race, and I'm not telling you to go vote for my um, because yes, he is. Let's be clear. To open <laughs> or to move to but, but but I am saying Jesus. that uh, that the admiral could, could agree with uh, in saying that regardless of who wins this race, I think Katie is going to be some very capable. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm going to turn it over to, All right. uh, to brother brother Clark. Brother Clark is going to lead us in a word of prayer. So I buy it. Yeah, we're buying your heads. Buy your heads and stick your head between, between your legs. legs. Yes, yes Lord. yourselves. All right, let, close your eyes and silence your recording devices and your cellular devices. <laughs> Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you today with our uplifting lesson <clears throat> and everlasting love. We ask you right now, right now, in your precious and sacred name to touch every soul and every heart in this room lord one of these Lord. candidates right now lord they are running on your mission lord regardless of the differences Ooh. and the differences of opinion and policy lord yes. touch each and every one of them from the crown of their head to the sole Dang of their it. feet anoint their mm. head with oil okay. touch them with blessings and ever and lift them up Ooh. lift them up on a high cloud you, do your work lord mm. because you are the way Thank you, lord. you are the beginning and god you are the will god yeah. touch them right, right now Lift them up and not let them fall, Lord. You, the, your, Lord, in your words, you said you prepare a table in front of our enemies, Lord. That's but right. in this, in this That's right, day, Bryson. they are not enemies, Lord. They are friends mm. in your sacred no, words. They, hey. they, you, are, <laughs> they are running your race, God, because only the, the Bible they says the who runners that run in the place, but only one receives the prize. Hey, you be Hey, Lord, but Lord, we ask you right now to breathe a mighty wind of progress and prosperity on each and every one of these candidates in this room, Lord. Make sure you use them in each and every way possible, Lord, because they are running to do your work and do your will. And we ask you right now to just send them on home, not literally, but just send them home with a clear mind and a clear heart. And let whoever wins, and and let whoever wins, Lord, let them do your work. And let them continue mm-hmm. to form in your glory and plant a crop because I believe a harvest is here. And Lord, let whoever Thank wins, Lord. let them reap from the harvest Praise. and let them get a mighty fruit and a Africa, mighty crop, Jesus. even if it's from Africa. And Lord, right now, mm-hmm. in your everlasting name, in your ever bearing name, God, breathe on us and let us continue no, with to live breath. through you because you are the end. You are the end. And you are the beginning. And God, you God. lift us up, keep us, and let us move on. And these, are the, and these are the blessings we pray. Let the Lord say yes. Let you say Amen. yes. And have a blessed night. And with that, we'll, we'll move on with our closing statements. We'll start off. Right what? I don't think we need closing statements. That I was think that beautiful. was a closing statement right there. That was beautiful. That was a that was a good closing statement. What was that? Okay. We'll end it there. Thank you all so much for coming. Go, go, we go with God. God. Go with God. With you. Go with God. Go be with After God. The doors of the church God. open. You may leave. Peace. Go ahead. Go Woo! get out. Thank go. you, Bryson. Thank you, Terrell.